What's up guys, I'm LQ, this is the LQ Review, and this is my review for Toy Story 4. Yep, I just went out today and caught the movie with my uh, son and my daughter. So I'm going to give you my thoughts and I'm going to give you their thoughts as well. So first of all, my thoughts. This was a really strong movie. You can't deny the fact that the Toy Story brand and the Toy Story franchise has been incredibly strong. Part 1 had 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Part 2 had 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Part 3 was like 98%. Part 4, I believe, is currently sitting at about 98%. Incredibly strong franchise. So this movie, um, this movie did what you expected it to do. It hit all the feels, right? Like, um, Woody's journey in this movie hit all the feels that you want it to hit. He, he's experienced a lot of loss in his life. Loss with uh, Andy. He's even experiencing a sense of loss with Bonnie. He's not Bonnie's favorite toy. He's nowhere near Bonnie's favorite toy and he keeps getting closeted. So there's a sense of loss with him as well. His loss with Bo Peep. He lost her. You know, that was the opening scene of the movie was, uh, was his, him losing her. So he's experienced a lot of loss in his life. And this movie is his, his arc is... All that loss and all that pain is going to bring him to a point where he's going to choose loss so he can gain something bigger. And like I said, this movie hit all the feels, the, the, especially the end. The end was entirely unexpected. I did not expect Woody to make the decision that he made at the end. In hindsight, it makes perfect sense. In hindsight, when you look at the movie and you look at Woody's arc and you look at the way it all went down, it all makes perfect sense. But... I wasn't expecting it in the moment. And like I said, as somebody who, you know, watched the original one in the theaters, somebody who's watched all these movies in the theaters and have kind of, I mean, Toy Story came out when I was 15, so I was already, you know, on the back end of my childhood. But as somebody who spent a lot of time, as somebody who spent a great deal of his life with these Toy Story characters, the end had that emotional punch and it was a different kind of emotional punch than the first than, than part three had part three had a much different kind of emotional punch that that i think will resonate longer with me part three's ending will resonate longer than part four's ending does but part four's ending had that gut punch as well now i don't feel like part four's ending has this finite definitive ending either i feel it's somewhat open open open-ended to where these characters can have another adventure together at some point. I don't know how they would do it, but the writers, you know, the writers would work their Pixar magic and uh, and we could have another uh, adventure with all these characters together. That being said, this was very much a Woody-centric story. Buzz got mostly backseated. Buzz didn't have much to do in this movie, and they kind of wrote a storyline for him in the movie that didn't feel necessary, but they had to have it there because Buzz was, is such an integral integral part to Toy Story. All the other characters definitely, they weren't even in the backseat. They were out of the car. Rex, Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head, Jesse, Bullseye. You know, these characters, yeah, they were in the movie. They had some lines, but they weren't, they weren't on the bus. They weren't on the bus with Woody, and they weren't in the backseat with, uh, with Buzz. This was very focused on a certain group of characters. Woody, Forky, um, the Key and Peele plushes, um, the, the Duke Kaboom, the character voiced by uh, Keanu Reeves, uh, Bo Peep. You know, that, they, that was the central group that was, that was focused on in this, in this movie. And, and this group worked. And I feel like if there is a Toy Story 5, I feel like this group is going to have to be the central group again. Unfortunately, Andy's toys are going to have to make way for a new set of toys. Because this new group, I believe, is going to be the new focal point of any adventures moving forward. That's not to say that Buzz Lightyear can't come back and the other characters can't come back and have a role. But this, this group that Woody has, that he's become a part of, they're going to be the focus, I believe. I could be wrong, but I believe they'll be the focus moving forward. Um... So yeah, the, it hit all the emotional beats. It had all the emotional gut punches that, that you know is going to come with a Toy Story movie. 
To be honest with you, though, I thought it was a little long. I, th I, I clocked in at 100 minutes, and it felt like 100 minutes. When I was watching it, I was like, there's a couple parts where I was like, let's get to it. Come on, let's get to it. Especially the stuff with um, the Gabby toy. Uh, Gabby, I forget, the doll. That, that uh, they set up to be a villain and ended up being a very sympathetic character. Which was a good, it was a good character in the movie. Especially the, uh, um, the ventriloquist dolls that she had um, employed as her thugs. <laughs> um, they, they were a little creepy. Especially with her storyline, I felt myself saying, "All right, let's get on. Let's get. Let's get to it. Let's get to it." And this movie also broke some rules that I believe that the toys have never broken before. I mean, they straight up sabotaged um, Bonnie's dad's RV to the point where Bonnie's dad is going to have to be like, "Something was going on here. You know, the, this isn't coincidence. That something supernatural was happening here <laughs> there's no other way to explain what these toys did to bonnie's dad's rv um so yeah i think that this movie hit all the emotional punches i wanted to hit hit all hit all those beats it was a little long and uh, there's a lot of characters that got backseated in this one or they weren't even on the bus um bo peep was a good strong character uh, it was nice seeing her come back after taking the last movie out and this is the most that she's ever been given to do it was nice seeing that Woody Bo Peep relationship turn into something different. You know, it always seemed a little, uh, a little platonic or a little one-sided in some of the other movies, and in this one, it, it developed into a real relationship, a toy relationship, a toy romance. Um, so that was interesting to see. But you know, the other movies were about Andy growing up. And this movie wasn't necessarily about any kid growing up. It was kind of about Woody growing up. It's kind of about Woody letting go of his childhood, letting go of his past, and becoming what he was always supposed to be. So if you look at it from that angle, strong movie. Strong movie. I, this, I, you know, I might sound hesit hesitant to praise this movie, and I'm not. This is a really good Toy Story movie. I'm going to have my Toy Story rankings out soon. I'm going to rank all four movies, and this is one of the best ones. It really is, but it's a different kind of Toy Story movie. Um, the Forky character kind of started to grade on me a little bit. You know, initially it was really funny. It always wanted to go to the trash can. It thought that it was trash, and then it learned what it meant to... Um, be in a relationship and, and then it, its goals changed but it still stayed as a character Forky still stayed kind of annoying but uh you're gonna see a lot of kids this Christmas get a get a, a Forky toy for, for Christmas and they're gonna be thrilled to get a spork <laughs> but uh um you know it, it's a character that definitely work it's gonna work for kids but for adults it's gonna kind of kind of become a grading character but overall I like this movie a lot this movie um yeah, this movie did everything that you expect a Toy Story movie to do. I give Toy Story 4 an A-. Now let's talk about my kid's reaction to it. My son is 11, and he was into the whole movie. He was. He was into the whole movie. He never got bored. And at the end, he walked out and he said, Wow. He said, I think that's my favorite Toy Story movie. This is coming from an 11-year-old that doesn't watch a lot of animated stuff anymore. So to say that... So for him to say, wow, I think that's my favorite Toy Story movie, that carried some weight with me. I was like, he doesn't watch many cartoons anymore. So he must have really liked it. My five-year-old, on the other hand, she got bored. I'm just telling you guys, my five-year-old got flat bored. She made it through the first two acts, and then in the third act, when they were implementing their plan, when the toys were executing their plan, she got, she got, she got bored. And I think that a lot of what was happening was over her head, especially the stuff with the relationships, the stuff with uh, with loss and and um, decisions that people can make, that toys can make that will lead them to their purpose, if you will. I feel like a lot of that was over their head, was over her head. She got bored. She looked at me at around, around the beginning of the third act and she said, I'm ready to go home. And I was like, well, let's finish the movie. And we, we sat there and finished the movie, but she was fidgety and she, she was done. She, she was done with the movie. So 11-year-old, 
thought it was the best Toy Story movie. Five-year-old got a little bored with it. So, just for what it's worth, I didn't get bored. I just thought it was a little long. That they could have cut some stuff out to make the narrative a little tighter. But overall, I give this movie an A-. Solid Toy Story movie. Definitely recommend that you go see it. What did you think of Toy Story 4? If you've seen it, let me know in the comments down below what you thought of it. And, as always, thank you for being here at the OQ Review, where we talk about all the geeky, nerdy stuff that we love to talk about. And until next time, we'll see you later.